Hey, everybody. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Native Wanda's Power Hour. Uh, we are on um, 155. Believe that. My name is Gene Tagaban. Um, and my slinket name is Gael. I'm of the Duck Dainton, Raven Freshwater Sockeye Clan from Huna, Alaska. Child of a Wishkaton, Eagle Shark Clan from Aquan in Juneau, Alaska. Um, Cherokee Slinket and Filipino. And today, that's a little bit of who I am. We're with the Native Wellness Institute and uh, our power hours. We put these together as a as a response to the pandemic that went out and uh you know we knew that traumatized people would be re-traumatized during this time so we wanted to uh come up with a solution how to bring that health that wellness and and possibility inspiration to our people and with that um you know here we are again we're on like week 60 or yeah week 64 and we've been going on and we're going to continue to go on with uh, our programs and so this month is uh um pride pride month you know and it's uh and so we're gonna we got a a relative on here we got ac on here and and i'll let you introduce yourself and uh uh yeah how you doing man doing good doing good i've got my first cup of coffee down so i'm ready to go oh good uh my name is ac ramirez taino higuagua uh, I'm Bohuti, and I live in Portland, Portland, Oregon. I just got moved into my new place, and I'm excited to uh, be here talking about Pride Month. Oh, right on, right on. And just to let people know, I just want to acknowledge that as well. I'm here on the, uh, the territories of the Coast Salish peoples and the land of the Puyallup here in Ruston, Washington. I just want to acknowledge, make acknowledgements to, to our people as we're right now, we're just making acknowledgements, you know, and just celebrating this Pride Pride Month. Finally, we're like, you know, Pride Month is here and there's just more inclusion and, and recognition and, 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 um, and at the same time, there's not. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, what's your, what's your thoughts? You know, that, that's on the, the list of the gifts of colonialism, right? Um, to go from being honored sacred people to having been um, just torn from, from our, our rightful roles, from our tribal communities, um, and to feel that I, I have that same feeling that you do, like, you know, things are, are coming around full circle and there's beginning to be recognition because um, there was a, a lot that I think our communities took on um, that were very uh, European mindsets to um, what it meant to be two-spirit. And, and to be clear, two-spirit is a very uh, recent term. It was like 1990 in Winnipeg. There was a conference of, of folks that we would now call two-spirit um, who came up with this term on how to self-identify. Because to be two-spirit means that uh, you have a, a ceremonial role in your community. You know, you have gifts and you share these gifts with your community and it's different than being, you know, LGBTQ um, and non-native. So if you're native, uh, you can still be LGBTQ and not necessarily identify as two-spirit. Um, but you can identify as two-spirit and not be LGBTQ, see? So there's all that, that nuance in there. But it feels like we have, uh, you know, reclaimed our sacred roles. and are also beginning to feel more recognition within our own communities, which is what's important to us. You know, if, if outside of our communities we're also recognized, that's fantastic. But if you're gonna talk about, you know, First Nations people, Native American, um, Pacific Islanders, um, we are all grasping on and reclaiming our place and to be welcomed again by our own communities for those of us who have lost that space um, is fantastic. It, it just, it feels like coming home. 
Right on. I mean, I like that just uh, about coming home, about coming home, you know, and, um, you know, and just for those who are, who are out there, I mean, just, you know, just, just who don't know, what does LGBTQ mean? You know, and you explain a little bit of what two spirit does mean. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, and sure, I could, I can, we could talk about this, but there's, there's people out there who still, they don't know what the heck is LGBTQ? What is two spirit? You know, and what is the, I mean, I hear it all over the place. What does it mean? Yeah. So, you know, the, the LGBT acronym has grown and grown and grown so that now it is something like, I, I, I'm afraid to say it because I might leave out a letter, but LGBTQIA 2S plus. So lesbian, gay, bi, trans, transgender. Um, queer, questioning, asexual, and other letters that the plus is for those that, that we haven't yet recognized in that acronym, right? And then the two S is two spirit. Two spirit folks are, those are our, 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 our native community members who recognize within themselves that they fall outside the gender binary. So they don't necessarily identify as just male or just female. Um, they may identify as both. It may be very fluid. Um, they may identify as a third gender. Um, many different tribal nations have different uh, traditional words for their folks who, you know, that, that, Two-spirit is the, the pan-Indian term, right? But the individual tribal nations each have their own words for what they would have called folks like me. Uh, for, you know, in Arawak, we can say Biawaisa, which means two-spirit. Um, I'm sure that there were other words that have been long gone lost mm -hmm. um, for, for my ancestors and for many folks' ancestors as you know, our, our languages were, you know, lost or, or, you know, being reclaimed and it's a mess, but we're doing the work and we're getting, we're getting there in beautiful, beautiful ways. Um, being part of the language project um, for, for myself meant learning that term. I never knew, knew that mm -hmm. term, Biawaisa, right? Yeah. So being able to to learn that term and to be able to be accepted and, and to be told, Hey, you know, there, there, there were traditional ceremonial roles and, and, you know, here, here's how it was. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's plenty of two spirit folks who had to battle for custody of their own children because people didn't understand what that was. And so the, the more that we're, we're teaching, like, I'm not just out here teaching, I'm out here learning. And I tell you what, my biggest teachers have been the youth. Uh, Boy, have they like brought, holy cow, so much information to me that I have been so eternally grateful for. Our I th well, I think part of, I think part of that, that, youth, that youth movement is like there, uh, there's a fearlessness around it. Yeah, there's a fearlessness around it, and a, not only the fearlessness, but there's a fierceness about you know. It's like okay, here we are. I was just talked to a friend, and he has a uh, like a middle school um, granddaughter, you know, and even less. I mean, and they're and in that age group, I mean, it's hard for them. That's a hard, that's a tough age group. I mean, they're, they're taking a look at who they are and they're identifying who they are, you know, and, and but they're able to start to speak out about it too. You know, any words for them or, or those parents or, or grandparents who are, are with, uh, are those ones in their families, those relatives? Absolutely. I think that um, the biggest uh, lesson that I've learned is that we have to listen to the youth. Listen. Um, nobody knows 
their gender better than than the person, right? Like I I can't come tell you your gender, Gene. <laughs> like yeah. it just doesn't work that way. So when kids are telling us things about their gender or their sexuality, we have to hear that and 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 we have to set aside our our fears about what that means because they know their reality and we've got to be there to back them up and support them and connect them with resources that that sometimes can be difficult to find when we're talking about folks out in more rural areas um you know just hearing our kids finding those pieces to help support them and then finding a separate set of supports for ourselves to, to get us through it too. There's a lot of unlearning I've had to do in my life. And I think the last probably 10, 15 years of my life, I have done more to decolonize my mind than my entire lifetime. Right? So there's a, a big chunk of learning that happens for us no matter what age we're in. Um, so yeah, I, I think as far as, as youth goes, I, I think I use that term loosely because I would say 35 and under, you know? I mean, even in Indian country, we, we see those young ones too, as those, those young elders. I mean, because they carry that knowledge, you know, and they're just, there's a wisdom there. And it just blows me away. I look at them and I'm just like going, who the heck are you? Yeah. Who the heck are you? You know, and again, they're bringing this, this just uh, higher, you know, deeper awareness with them, you know, and this, this, this fierceness that's with them, you know, but those, there's a lot of people out there who are wondering, what can I do? How can I be? an ally what can i do to support you know and, and how can those who are questioning that be those allies and how can they be support yeah so i think that um like recognizing that your family member or your friend or whoever it is that you want to support um you know, they, they're, they're going to know themselves better than you as far as that goes. Um, to be able to um, educate yourself as much as you can, like to go online and, and just like Google is magic. You can put that stuff in and, and you can learn a lot of stuff. Um, but being able to do that will give you a tiny picture of what your family member or friend is going through and some of the struggles that they might face. You know, there's different things, you know, for some folks simply walking home between their job and their house can be a dangerous thing for them. Oh. You know, I, I haven't had to have to deal with that, right? Like I can generally get from place to place without too much problem, but there's a lot of us who can't. So like educating yourself about those pieces that may or may not affect your loved one is gonna be the first piece. And then going to them and asking them, do you, do you have a problem getting back and forth to work? You know, can I offer you a ride? You know, can I game plan with you about how you're gonna get home at you know, midnight when you get off of work and you're walking and I'm concerned about you. Because uh, if you never know, they might not tell you. Mm -hmm. They just might be trying to quietly make it home themselves safely. So we don't know until we ask. We don't know until we ask. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly. Exactly. And that's something I never thought about either. You know, and it's one of those things. I mean, sure, I can hang up these flags. I can like be out there and say I'm supportive, you know, but that's one thing, but actually to like in public to be able to speak, speak out as a man, as a, as a man, you know, and, and one thing I do, I want to say, get our, you know, our, our relatives, our brothers out there to, you know, uh, that's, you know, to speak out, 
speak out, you know, because there's a lot of homophobia out there, especially uh, on our reservations. 